is the Tour de France? Well, the tour began as a publicity stunt for a newspaper in 1903, but it was in 1904 that we saw the toughest, roughest, most controversial tour of them all. The favourite was Frenchman Maurice Garin, who won the previous year. This time, however, the field was stronger. Garin set a cracking pace from the start, but after a while, some strange things started to happen. Riders found themselves itching uncontrollably, almost as if someone had dropped itching powder down their shirts. It soon became clear that not all was quite sporting. One rider is said to have fallen asleep at the handlebars after his drink was doctored with sleeping pills. But then the racing got really dirty. Four months later, however, Garin and the next three riders were all disqualified for everything from laying nails in the road in front of their competitors to hitching lifts in cars. So the first prize eventually went to the fifth place man, Henri Cornet. So, how hard is the Tour de France? Well, in 1904, a very hard and dirty race indeed. How do you make a soap star? Oh, well, you need a big production company, some good actors, no, a TV channel. No, 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 that's not what I mean. Who's your favourite soap star, Fred? I like that little Leanne in Coronation Street. Oh, yeah. Seems like a nice girl. Yep, nice yeah. family. Nice yeah. family. Yeah. But yeah. look what right. I've made you. Little Leanne. Your very own Leanne star. But smell it. Soap. A soap star. Soap Can you show us how to make one? I will show you. Now, it's very, very simple indeed. All you need is a food blender, and you need four basic ingredients. You need your salt flakes, cornstarch, a little bit of colouring, and some water. Now, what you start off with is 100 millilitres of hot water. Pour that into the blender. There you go. Get the cornstarch, which you can buy from any supermarket. Um, pop in a tablespoonful of cornstarch. There we go. And then I have added, a, I'm going to add a little bit of colouring, just to make it look nice, about that much it might be a little bit too much but never mind it doesn't matter and we, i've measured out about four mugs full of uh, soap flakes uh, now what we've got to do i've put them into these beakers what i've got to do is pop them in to the blender but i'm only going to add one cup at a time because if i put in too many it'll get stuck in the blades and it won't it won't be much use to us so I'll put in one so put the lid in the blender and switch it on See, it's beginning to mix quite nicely there, and I'd add more soap flakes as I went along. And then eventually I would end up with this soapy dough. And what I, what I would do then is choose my favourite soap star. I've chosen Adam Rickett, also from Coronation Street. And then I've got a cake cutter shaped in a star. Pop it down like that, and I've covered Adam with uh, waterproof sticky tape on the front and the back so that he doesn't get all washed out. Pop this picture on the bottom of the cutter. Get my soapy dough and squeeze it ugh, right into it like that. Make sure it gets down nicely. And then what I do is I tidy that all up and pop it into the fridge for a couple of hours. Now while that's in the fridge for a couple of hours, I would clean this very, very carefully because you want to get rid of all the soap flakes. Then you get, I get my Adam Rickett out of the fridge and he's a lot harder now and it's very cold and it's easy for me to push out of the cake cutter like so do it very carefully and ta-da there we go and that is how you make a soap star how healthy is fat it's not very healthy at all you don't want too much of that stuff gareth no absolutely right over the day breakfast lunch and dinner it's very important to have a balanced diet but sometimes that balance can change say for instance when 
you found yourself fancying a bite to eat and you were in the middle of the Arctic. When you're in the Arctic Circle, it's very important to eat properly. In fact, just to stay warm, you need to eat three times as many calories as you would normally. Now, the body would find it almost impossible to digest that amount of food. So what you need is a superfood, the maximum energy for the minimum amount of space. And what is this wonder food? Well, the answer is suet. It's basically just fat, solid fat. But the body finds it very easy to convert that fat into energy. It's the perfect Arctic food. In fact, a recent expedition ate suet morning, night and day. For breakfast, they had a nice bowl of cereal with suet sprinkled on top. Yum, yum. Lunch would have been some soup with a great glob of suet in it. Dinner was dried meat with suet sprinkled all over it. Mmm, absolutely lovely. Oh, Ray! Bush! 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 I'll Ray, tell you, you what, Gareth. Just in time for lunch, my friend. We've had suet every day, now for a hundred days. Haven't you got anything else? Well, Fred, come on. What do you expect in the middle of the Arctic? A cafe? A good idea. Good morning, darling. So what can I get you? Come on, Magic. What have you got, love? Well, I've got my board here with all my specialities on it. We've got suet and chips. We've got suet flan. We've got suet soup. All right, darling. We've also got sandwiches, we've got cheese and suet, we've got fried suet and we've got our speciality, sausage, suet and suet. You'd like that, darling, wouldn't you? Have you got anything without suet, love? So, if you find yourself in the Arctic, suet is surprisingly good for you. And that's how healthy fat is, and that's... How for now! Tell you what, I'll have the veggie suet burger.